Greetings, welcome to another Decker Games YouTube thing. Just a couple of days back while watching Jungle Cruise, a new uh, Disney movie with a guy who thinks he's a rock and Emily Blunt, I was having constant flashbacks to the good and old days of DOS gaming and, to be more precise, adventure games in the Amazon forest. So, because uh, apparently I have too much information in my head, it is time to take care of that and review Flight of the Amazon Queen. Developed by Interactive Binary Illusions and published by Renegade Software in 1995 for MS-DOS PCs. So, nope, this isn't a LucasArts or Sierra adventure game. You know, it's one of the others. And that is a good thing, because Flight of the Amazon Queen draws a lot of inspiration from games like Monkey Island or Indiana Jones Fate of Atlantis, so if you like those, you're going to love this little gem. It is sort of a combination between the two and contains many of the same elements and much of the same kind of humor. You play as Joe King, the main character, a pilot for hire, and at the beginning of the game Joe is to fly film star Faye Russell to the Amazon jungle for a photo session. But his arch-rival Hans Henderson, aka the Flying Dutchman, has other plans to it. Your first task as Joe is to escape from the hotel where you have been locked in a room by Hans, then it's on to the airport to keep your uh, appointment with Faye. Soon I will rule the skies! Hey, you can't do that. I just did. Now try and get out of this one, King. See you later! I've got a plane to catch! <laughs> Having done that, you discover that uh, it is not all smooth flying. Lightning causes your plane to crash in the jungle and you must set out to find help. Almost immediately you learn that uh, Princess Azura, leader of the race of the Amazons, has been kidnapped and that the sinister organization known as Flora is behind it. Cutscenes give you an insight into the evil machinations of Flora and the mad genius Dr. Frank Ironstein, who wants to build an army of dinosaur people to conquer the world, because uh, that's what you do. You called for me, Dr. Einstein? Yes. I want you to witness the testing of my dino ray. With it, I can turn humans into dinosaur people. Watch as I demonstrate. <laughs> Now to activate the machine. Amazing! She transformed into a monster before my very eyes. Oh, and by the way, to do that, Dr. Einstein needs Amazon natives. That's his plan. Don't ask questions. The game has a good, rounded and uh, quirky plot that follows well to the classic three-act structure. I wasn't bored with the quest at any point from a narrative point of view, which, let me tell you, is a good thing, because uh, this is a long, and I mean long, third-person, point-and-click game with uh, easy-to-use icons for action, a small inventory and a quite brilliant map. The adventure begins for the player at the beginning, which is in a magician's dressing room in an hotel in Rio de Janeiro with Joe ready to follow your orders. Only problem is, the door is locked and it's a long way down through the window. This is a very good puzzle to start the game with and the one room beginning scenario helps to get players acquainted with the controls and to some extent the sense of humor this game has. Flight of the Amazon Queen sees such useful devices as uh, parody breasts added to your inventory for a puzzle somewhere in the game. Thankfully, the tasks required of your brain are always rewarding and there are some tricky moments to be found. Several puzzles kept me guessing for a long time, like a gorilla, which uh, isn't supposed to be there, because gorillas belong in Africa, and this is South America, so when you confront him, well, he just disappears. Yeah, not all the puzzles make sense. 
I thought gorillas came from Africa. Chonga, Chonga. Say, buddy, I think you're right. Gorillas are only found in Africa. The focus of this game is really on the adventure side of things. Don't worry about any drifting into the territory of full-on action. That doesn't exist. Many features contributed to the overall playability. The comic book backgrounds and characters are bright, colorful and friendly, inviting participation. One thing that I really like are the cutscenes in Flight of the Amazon Queen. Fitting in with the fairly fluid development of the plot, they drive the story forward rather than being redundant showpieces. The diction of the voice actors was very clear overall. This was one of the few games where I didn't need to use the on-screen text option to follow what was being said, but I was nevertheless pleased to note that uh, it was still available if required. Mechanic and a stuck-up, half-witted, scruffy-looking bush pilot. Who's scruffy looking? Just quit the gabbing and get me out of here, okay? It's a uh, adequate performance all round. Some heavy on uh, cliches like the math doctor, I guess Germans, but uh, overall neither impressive or poor enough to make you reach for the mute button on your speakers. As for the soundtrack, mild is the kindest word I can use to describe what stumbles along in the background. All the tunes start in a uh, OK mode, let's call it that, but then they go into this um, hypnotic, buzzing mode that doesn't sound like music anymore. It's sharp. That should do the trick. It would make a great boat, but I need some sort of paddle. In a similar fashion are the game controls. They are arranged in the classic adventure style. A row of icons such as Pooch, Pull and Talk To. Maybe it's just that I've gotten used to the Point First and Shoes After. Or maybe it's just that dragging the mouse down to the icon bar every single time, then clicking again just to get something done is slightly irritating. I would like to have the option to double click to jump to a location rather than watching Joe King every each time slowly move from spot to spot. Don't get me wrong, the controls are nothing to tear your hair out, but they're certainly more annoying than uh, they could have been. Not to mention the uh, amount of screen that they take at the bottom. But back to the adventure. There are plenty of locations and characters from the aforementioned dressing room and uh, escaping from it to several locations once in the Amazon, there is always plenty to see and to do in this game. The map has been uh, well thought out and uh, it is populated with uh, varied and almost always interesting characters. It is fair to say that uh, there aren't uh, many games that will see you trading with an Amazon jungle base store owner who has a uh, offensively ugly beard. The entire scenery from the plot to the locations and the people within them is something I enjoyed about the game a great deal. This game is also a spoof of adventure games in general, so you will visit all sorts of places from a, an Amazon day spa to a 24-hour jungle convenience store. The broad, stereotypical characters are absolutely perfect, from the uh, boyish, innocent abroad charm of Joe to the manic evil Dr. Eidenstein with a wonderful offbeat and laid-back humorous dialogue. So is Flight of the Amazon Queen worth it? No LucasArts adventure game this is, but putting that to the side and focusing on the positives of this game, which, in my opinion, is the adventure itself? The answer is yes. Don't expect perfection because an imitation can never aspire to be as good as the original, but that being said, it doesn't mean it can't do some things right. It is a good story, with an okay voice acting and great looking graphics 
if you like uh, pixelated things in 2021. So, if you are a pointer, or a clicker, or both, which is even better, give this one a try. And guess what? It is free since 2004, so uh, just go to GOG, download it, and enjoy another DOS classic. There, that should do the trick. And while speaking of enjoyment, if you enjoyed this video leave it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because your support is very much appreciated. Feel free to check out all the other videos that I have here on the channel. As always, thank you very much for watching this one and until my next video, please do take care. Hurry, Sparky, we gotta get to the airport. Hey, that was Lola, that was King. Let's get him!